Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. My wife just left for work. It is It is 8.05 here in West Michigan. It is March the 13th. It is Friday the 13th. And uh, I just fried some sausages and cleaned the kitchen and brushed my teeth. And I got my diary out again, my paper diary to write in, write down my, hey, I think it's, Kind of blurry. Anyway, I wrote, I write in my diary when I get really uh, anxious. It's kind of like therapy for me. <laughs> Tonight I'm on page 263 for the year 2020. And uh, so I thought I'd stop by and say hi. Hope you're doing well in the midst of this, this uh, virus. It, it's just a, it's a, I can't even pronounce it. Either. I wrote it down in my diary. I wrote down the symbols for it. <laughs> I thought it'd be a lot easier than always writing out the full name of the virus. And it's called COVID-19. COVID-19. Co COVID-19. So yeah, I'm kind of, as you all know, I'm kind of anxious by nature. I'm always kind of freaked out, full of dread, living in fear, waiting for the collapse of the Western civilization, the end of humanity, the ecological disasters. And so this is not really helping me at all. <laughs> I told Carol tonight before she left for work that she's supposed to fly out to Denver next Tuesday and I said I you know I'd be more anxious if you were not here so she might not go because I don't know if I could handle her being gone for a whole week in the midst of this uh, pandemic uh, plus I don't know if she could get back she might get infected out there and, and be on quarantined and uh, so I don't know. I don't think it'd be a good a good decision for her to fly anywhere. I think everybody should just stay home and not travel anywhere or go anywhere unless they really have to. And uh, now today I volunteered at the library used bookstore, the Book Nook, and I felt really kind of apprehensive about going. But I looked at the library website and they said that they would not close the library unless the health department said it was necessary. And so I went, I took some, some disinfectant wipes and wiped everything down. But every time somebody sniffed their nose, you know, sniffing their nose, there's allergies or they coughed, I just immediately felt kind of freaked. And I'm sure that's a natural response because we're all being bombarded with this news of this virus and this pandemic pandemic and it's just everything's closing down and so what do you do well you know you read a book <laughs> so when i was at the book nook today this is a friday reads and a used book haul uh the other day i went to i had to go get some money because i had to get some money to pay I somebody I was, I was mailing out to somebody a book and I needed some cash and I went to our credit union what was it it was yesterday Thursday I think I did anyway when I was there at the bank I went to two local thrift stores no two I think I just went to one yeah, I just went to one thrift store. Yeah. No, I know what it was. I went to the get. I went to the credit union. Then I filled up my old Dodge van up with gas because gas was a a dollar eighty six a gallon. So then I went to the 
gas station and on the way I stopped at a thrift store and I found two books at this thrift store. I found this science fiction novel by Dan Simmons. I, I collect his books. I don't collect, I don't think I have any of his science fiction anymore, fantasy horror, but this is a, a trilogy. It's called LM. 3,000 people had this cataloged and library thing, so it must be very popular. I gotta drink some water. So even when I get a dry throat and I start getting a dry cough, I think, uh oh, I got the virus. See, I'm all freaked out. So I picked that up at the thrift store. And then I picked up this thing. You know, I collect things on writing. This is the Oxford, Oxford America's Writers Thesaurus. Contributing editor, David Auburn, Michael Deera, Francine Prose, David Foster Wallace, Simon Winchester. So I got this. I, you know, if I see things like dictionaries or writers things or anything, and it's really cheap, I pick it up. I got this for 60 cents. So I picked it up. And I like looking at words and I like looking at dictionaries and things like this. So I picked these two things up at that thrift store. And then before coming home, I stopped at another thrift store. And all I found was this. Now, this is a novel by John Barth. As you all know, I've made videos over the years of my John Barth collection. I have this in hardback. I might even have it in paperback. This is John Barth's uh, classic novel, The Sodweed Factor. And I've been reading this. I read it all day yesterday, and I've been reading it today. And uh, that's what my Friday reads is. I Now, I probably won't finish this. I'll probably read it in the state of my anxiety and fear and dread and anxiousness. I'm just reading this because I really can't focus on anything else. So I've been, this is my Friday Reads, John Barth, The Sodweed Factor. Uh, it says here in the back, considered by critics to be Barth's most distinguished masterpiece, The Sodweed Factor has acquired the status of modern, a modern classic. Set in the 1600s, it recounts the wildly chaotic odyssey of hapless ungainly Ebenezer Cook sent to the New World to look after his father's tobacco business and to record the struggles of the Maryland colony in an epic poem. On his mission, Cook experiences captured by pirates and Indians, the loss of his father's estate to a roguish impostors, love for a former prostitute, stealthily efforts to rob him of his virginity, which he is almost determined to protect, an extraordinary gallery gallery of treacherous characters who continually switch identities. A hilarious bonny, brawny tribute to the to all the most insidious of human vices. The sideweed factor has a lasting has lasting relevance for readers of all times. It says here a quoting from the New York Times book review, outrageously funny. Venously slanderous, the book is a bare knuckle satire of humanity at large. So I I really like John Barth. I've been reading him since since high school, and every once in a while I'll pick up one of his novels and I'll read it. Uh, I don't always finish them, but I like I read him for a couple weeks or a week. So I've been reading that John Barth, The Sodweed Factor. And then uh, I also have been reading, I got this in the mail the other day too. This is uh, Rick Perlstein's Before the Storm, Barry Goldwater, The Unmaking of the American Census. I read almost a hundred pages of this. And I was reading his other book, uh, Nixon Land. And... So I wanted, this is the first of 
four books. The fourth comes out in August, Reaganland, in August 2020. And uh, so I've been reading this. Now, last week, or was it this week? I can't remember. My wife was at a library called Finvale Public Library and they have used books and she bought me these used books. She bought me this book, The Ri Berlin Rising, Biography of a City by Anthony Reed and David Fisher. My wife got this for 50 cents. She knows I collect books on Berlin, especially in the 20s and 30s, and she bought this for me. And then she bought this book for me, Pathfinder, Charles Fremont, The Course of American Empire by Tom Chafin. She knows I collect books on American history. And I already had a book by Tom Chafin, The Sea of Grey, The Around the World Odyssey of a Confederate Raider, Shenandoah. So she got, she got me this book, Pathfinder. And then she picked up this book that's been in the news lately, War on Peace, the End of Di uh, Diplomacy and the Decline of the American Influence by Rowan Farrell. So she picked these up for me for $1.50. Can't go wrong. And then I, I got at, I was at the Book Nook last Monday and I picked this up. I had this in paperback, but they had a hardback came in. The Unconsoled, the Unconsoled by Ishu, Ishigura. I read this a couple of years ago, and I. This is a hardback. I took today. I took back the paperback edition. This is also a first. First edition of this novel. It came out in. 1995. I also had this book in paperback, but I found a hardback at the book nook. Uh, Embracing Defeat Japan in the Wake of World War II by John W. Doler. I had this in paperback and this hardback came in, so I got a hardback. And then I picked up this book, Chir uh, Gandhi and Churchill, The Epic Rivalry That Destroyed the an Empire and Forged Our Age by Arthur Herman. I collect books on Gandhi and Churchill, and so I picked this up. So I picked this up, and then I picked, I had this also in paperback, this novel, and this hardback edition came in, The Confederacy of Dunce, a novel by John Kennedy Toole, winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. So this really nice hardback edition, clean text, I also think it's a first edition. Yeah, it's a first edition. So I picked that up last Monday. Now, yes, today I volunteered at the Book Nook and I got these books, uh, the conservative, the portable conservative, the portable conservative reader edited by Russell Kirk. Then I picked up this novel by Anthony Burgess. I collect his writings. He's famous for his novel Clockwork Orange. And uh, if I, I'm always looking for him. He wrote, he was a prolific writer. And I always look for his writings. And this came into the book nook today. The One Hand Clapping, a novel by Anthony Burgess. I had these set aside at the book nook. These are classic crime novels by... Ross McDonald, published in the Library of America. Four novels of the 1950s by Ross McDonald. Way Some People Die, uh, The Barbious Coast, Doomsters, and Ganton Case. And then these are by Ross McDonald. Three novels of the early 1960s. The Zuber Striped Hearse, The Chill, The Far Side of the Dollar. And then Ross McDonald. Four later novels, Black Money, Instant Enemy, Goodbye Look, and The Underground Man. I collect, I collect classic crime writers. 
So I picked these up, got these for nine dollars. And then I picked this up at the book nook today. Our Country, The Shaping of America from Roosevelt to Reagan by Michael Barron. Uh, this is on the politics of from Roosevelt, like a political history from Roosevelt until Reagan. And it goes along with my reading of Before the Storm, Barry Goldwater, The Unmaking of the American Census by Rick Bernstein. So these go together. So these are the things I'm reading, the thing, the used books I've added to our library. So I've been reading Before the Storm, Barry Goldwater, The Making of the American Census by Rick Bernstein. And I've been reading uh, John Barth, The Sod Weed Factor. These are, and like I said, in the mornings I get up. You know, I still write in my diary, but I have a hard time reading my Christian books. So I just kind of, uh, I talk to my wife about my spiritual life and we pray and I just kind of wait it out. Uh, you know, sometimes you just, this, you get really overwhelmed with what's going on in the world and this virus and the news and all of the insanity going on around you in the world and you just can't focus on anything and so I just kind of read here and there and read my Bible pray sit in silence contemplative silence you just have to believe that God isn't sovereign that God's a sovereign God and that he's ruling the heavens and the earth and that he has my life within his hands and he'll his will be done on earth as in heaven. So I hope you're all doing well, that you're staying healthy and not getting sick. I, I suppose all that we can do is pray and wait this out and see what happens. So I thank you for the new subscribers. I thank you for the comments. And uh, once again, if you're feeling sick, stay home drink lots of water, go to your doctor. Today, uh, I was at the book nook and my friend Tim called and said he needed to go to prime care. He has doesn't have the virus. He has a, a bronchitis and the flu, and so I took him there today. And as I was waiting for him at the emergency care, I read John Barth, The Sod Wheat Factor. I read this many, many, many years ago. I think when I was in high school, I read this. And uh, So, I'll sign off. I'll put these books down the lower level, except for these two books that I'm reading. I collect books on Barry Goldwater. I collect books on John Kennedy, the Truman, Eisenhower. Politics of the 50s, that's why I got this. I collect books on Reagan. So. I'll sign off. Hope you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.